Us Live today is brought to you by GCB Bank. Hello again and welcome back to Business Live. Now all is now set for the construction works to begin at the Tema Port expansion by next month. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is to cut sort for the $1.5 billion project which will be financed by the International Finance Corporation, the private lending arm of the World Bank. Director of the Tema Port, Jacob Adoko, disclosed this at an opening of the West African Ports Evolution Seminar in Accra. According to him, the project comprises reclamation of about 100 hectares of land, construction of new passenger terminal, oil rig servicing and repair facility, new container terminal and breakwaters, among others. The project is expected to be completed by 2020 is the biggest investment from the IFC to the maritime industry in Ghana. The Tamaport expansion works has become necessary due to the increase in volumes of trade over the years at the port. The expansion works will entail the reclamation of about 100 acres of land, dredging of future basin and access channel, construction of a new passenger terminal, four-kilometer road network, oil rig servicing and repair facility, among others. Feasibility studies have already been conducted, while financing arrangements have been signed between the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, the Meridian Port Service as partner, and the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank. The director of Tema Port, Jacob Adoko, said the expansion works will enable Ghana's port to receive larger vessels and also reduce congestion significantly. Looking at the structural position of the port, the key uh, structure, we decided that we will dredge the port, and the port was dredged to 11.5. Currently, the port has reached its limit, uh, its capacity limit. We cannot receive any vessel which is bigger or which is carrying uh, a draft of more than 11.5 meters. And for that reason, we are thinking of where to go. And because of that, we have entered into partnership with our container terminal operator which is the Meridian Port Services. After a very long discussion and negotiation, starting from 2012 to date, a 1.5 billion Tema Port expansion plan is about to be unfolded. So it will be cut on the 1st of October for the actual construction work to be done, meaning that the preliminary, the feasibility, everything, every pre-construction activity has been completed. Finances have been obtained from the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank. Minister of Transport of Nigeria, Chibuike Rotimi Ameachi, noted that expansion works are very necessary in enhancing seaport trade at the sub-region. He cited some projects that Nigeria is also undertaking to improve trade. We also approved another uh, proposal for a private investor to build the Badagri seaport. The government is in negotiation with the Chinese firm <coughs> to do the central rail line. The central rail line cuts across our natural resource, what people call the solid mineral, from Abuja to Wari, so there will be another seaport in Wari which will be built by the Chinese firm under a public-private partnership. As we are all aware, ports all over the world are considered vital gateways, linking the world's transport corridors. Estimates show that over 74% of goods entering or leaving the country go by sea. Ports also play a crucial role both in the exchange of goods within internal markets and in linking distant places. They are not only great for moving goods and people around, but they also generate employment and investment opportunities. That's true. But do ports actually move more goods than train? Maybe international goods, but certainly not, not domestic. Because for between Lagos and Kano, we have 30 million tons of cargoes to lift. Currently, we are doing below 200,000 in Nigeria. That's the real. The rest we assume go by road. 
and it's affecting business because most people don't want to do, are not able to move their goods. In fact, when I ask, when I ask the question, why are foreign investors not investing in our rich natural resources? And the person gave me an example, say forget gold, anybody can move gold. Nigeria has coal, Nigeria has gold. The person said, look, you can't move coal unless you have trains. The Tima Port Expansion Project, when completed by 2020, will be the largest port investment in the sub-region. State oil refinery Tor has finally resumed operations after an initial break earlier this year. The refinery is looking at starting operations with a daily production capacity of 30,000 barrels of crude oil. The development should go a long way to improve Ghana's petroleum reserves and help the country save some huge dollars used in importing these products. Kwame Wadako is chief executive of Tor. As we speak right now, we are getting back into production. We are discharging a vessel of crude oil. I think I met with you uh, some time back and I said we we're going to do a trial run. And in that trial run, we'll do between one and three million barrels, which we successfully did. Um, since we did that, we've done some strengthening works and maintenance works on the plant. Um, we're going to produce another four million barrels or process another four million barrels between now and the end of the year. Why is because we are going to stop somewhere in October or November and do our turnaround maintenance. Once we conclude the turnaround maintenance, the plant will operate for 18 months non-stop. That's when you get the real benefits of uh, refinery uh, operations in the country. In the meantime, we're also upgrading from a, a current 30,000 facility to a 45,000 facility. 45,000 barrels capacity will come on stream in September next month. And that will allow us to go from processing a million barrels every 42 days to a million barrels every 21 days. So the increase in the throughput of the refinery is going to go up significantly, which is going to lead to more efficiencies and cost savings. Meanwhile, Kwame Wadakon says the much talked about tour debt has hit $600 million. He stressed that government is currently working to pay off the debt with a 10-year bond that will be issued very soon. The tour debt as we speak right now um, is close to $600 million. However, I say that with a bit of a caveat because we are now concluding the financial audited financial statements for some historical years. So until that has been finally written off, this is just a management uh, uh, number. What we've agreed with our banks in this restructuring is, instead of calling it a bond, it's going to come out as a self-amortizing facility. But it is all, to all intents and purposes, is structured as a bond. So Tor is doing the paying the investment amount of 148 million cities. That means that the ESLA levies that are going to the Tor debt recovery, uh, that are coming out of the Tor debt recovery uh, levy portion will be used to pay the interest and um, it will lead to a self-amortization of the facility over the next 10 years. We have uh, an interest rate of 20%, it's a zero coupon bond, and so on and so forth. So we are going to run it for six months, bring confidence in the transaction to the financial markets, and then list it as a bond. Moving on, Nigeria's economic recession is expected to impact significantly on West African economies. The situation in Nigeria has been attributed to dwindling global crude prices, the falling value of the Naira, as well as increased inflation, which is now pegged at 17.1%. But trade analyst Richard Ampabing, speaking on the marketplace, noted that countries can mitigate the impact of Nigeria's recession on their economies. He advised West African countries to harmonize their trade relations to offset unpredictable situations that befall sister countries in the future. Ghana must be worried about what is happening in Nigeria. Um, I say so because uh, Nigeria accounts for about 10% of Ghana's foreign trade. And Ghana is Nigeria's ninth largest trading partner. You know, so if your trading partner is going through challenges, hmm. then it is most expected that some of the problems will be extended to you. So that's the worry of the Ghanaian economy also. I'm worried, um, looking from the, um, the position of uh, trade analysts, 
uh, analyzing trade. Why is it that in West Africa we have different um, custom tariffs? Why is it that we have different trade agreements? It's making us lose out. So, for instance, if Ghana is concentrating on doing X, Y, and Nigeria is also doing the same thing with some kind of um, okay. uh, cheap, I would say, things to attract foreign direct investment, then you will see that people will be shifting to Nigeria as against Ghana. Mm. I'll give you an example. Some countries within even ECOWAS community have free port arrangement, they call it. So you realize that everybody will want to pass their goods through those countries that the seemingly free port system working over there. So in other ways, they make anchor those ports and then try to smuggle their goods through areas where otherwise you pay tariffs. Mm. These are the things that as ECOWAS must sit down, cooperate, and coordinate these activities and we have common tariffs so if you go to nigeria you go to benin you go to togo you come mm. to ghana Cote d'Ivoire, senegal you have the same tariff so now much will depend on good governance much will depend on um other considerations than dodging taxes here and there so that is what we have now, some banks have expressed misgivings about the request by Eastwich agents to be allowed to issue cards. Eastwich cards are currently issued by banks, but agents being roped in to offer the service want to also be allowed to sign on individuals to boost patronage. However, some banks Joy Business has been speaking to say some problematic issues need to be tackled before this can be implemented. Here's head of Eastwich Service at Access Bank, Alexander Walter Annan, and head of e-payments at GT Bank, Joshua Addo. It is the, the cost implication. We are buying devices, we are buying cards. If, you, if the agent wants to issue card, the agent needs a working laptop, a modem, because it, that is an uh, online thing. So if the bank is going to invest that much in the agent to do the issuance, then I think we have to look at the agent as a whole. If uh, in case like surety, uh, surety kind of should the agent uh, run away with our kids so it comes down to KYC so if we get the KYC done proper on the agent I think we are we are good we can we can give the agent the devices to issue the cart on our behalf um, it's a dicey issue um, there's a lot of uh, things that we need to consider as a bank you can't have just anyone signing on anybody to roll on Israel services. So again, um, I think I would like to reiterate that if you want to sign on for a bank, you talk to us first. We'll have to understand what you do and then probably see if we would like to work with you in that regard or not. But it's best to work with a bank. Talk to your bank and then we can move on from there. Still within the banking industry, the Bank of Ghana's plan to establish a fund dedicated to financing agriculture appears to be taking shape. The central bank is now inviting bids from consultants to help with the setting up of the fund. But how is the fund going to operate? George Rafi tells us more. The Bank of Ghana, in a public notice, is asking for applications from firms that have the capacity to manage the fund to apply to the central bank. The fund will be known as the Ghana Incentive-Based Risk-Sharing System for Agricultural Lending. The regulator says it is doing this in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture, with support from the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa. The central bank says the fund will provide technical support for institutions that extend funding to farmers, especially those in the rural areas. It will also come up with some innovative insurance products for farmers to help reduce the risk of the sector. There will also be a mechanism that will incentivize commercial banks to increase the lending to the sector. The Bank of Ghana will also be coming out with a new mechanism that will rate banks based on their lending to the agricultural sector. Farmers will also get some support from the fund to go digital with the use of mobile phones. 
And in a related develop development, Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Johnson Isiama, tells Joy Business the fund would be used to address some of the numerous challenges facing the sector. For us, this is one small way of contributing. At the end of the day, financing to agri has to come from various sources. Don't forget, there's the Ministry of Agriculture. This is the arm of government that is charged to sort of drive that intervention. What we seek to do is the small and the smart interventions that will more or less facilitate, sort of uh, make sure that the flows go to that sector. So the intervention by no means, but it's not a panacea. We are essentially going to be looking at a number of cereals and then also some vegetables like tomatoes, etc. That's what we are looking at. And that will be enough for business stories on the local front. Let's now cross over to take a look at some business updates on the international front. Thanks for staying and welcome back. Now remember, the Joy Business Fund comes your way tomorrow on Business Live. It's now time for our interview of the day session. Now, very soon, tourists in southern Ghana would wish to, who wish to catch a glimpse of live crocodiles who no longer have to travel all the way to Paga in the Upper East region. This is because a large crocodile pond has been discovered in the Akachi North District of the Volta region. The District Assembly is, however, seeking private investors to help develop the pond into an eco-tourism site under a public-private partnership initiative. Let's watch this. Yeah, we have tried our best as an assembly. Now we've put one person in charge, a traditionalist, who is doing the traditional taming of these crocodiles. Um, some years back, they were coming out as and when they so wish. But now, these traditionalists will come and then perform some traditional um, you know, uh, practices, and then gradually we managed to invite uh, these crocodiles as and when he wants them to come out. So you can see that now we had this um, football team that came, and uh, some children came around and wanted to view the live crocodiles. So he's been able to bring them out. So gradually we have improved on the taming of these crocodiles. Now you can even touch them, they will not harm you. What is left now is to be able to develop some infrastructure around it, which the assembly is seeking a public-private partnership arrangement with investors, be it local or international investors, to come and assist us uh, develop this unique tourist attraction. Time to go. It's been exciting having you on today's program many times. Thanks for your time. And of course, do join me again, same time tomorrow, for another interesting package. My name is Manuel Apuaji. We are free. The show has been Business Live. Keep watching. Up next is Focus on Africa. <laughs>